Merry Christmas, YouTube. I'm Dr. Samuel 101 and welcome to my Christmas review. My god, it's finally Christmas. I don't know about you, but there's still no snow outside for me, so whatever. I don't know what you guys think of when you hear the word Christmas. Snow, presents, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. But for me, I think of the goddamn Batman! Oh, I bet you thought I'd forgotten about this little installment to the Arkham series, didn't you? But I made a promise. And I tend to deliver. The prequel to Arkham Asylum features a younger, less refined Batman in a rougher, tougher, and more corrupted Gotham. While not made by Rock City, it's still an Arkham game, and god damn if I don't have some high expectations. Also, if you're wondering why I'm reviewing this for Christmas. You do realize it is Christmas Eve, sir. That's all the reason I need. Merry Christmas, guys. Let's see if this game says to be roasted on an open fire. Or left stuff in our sockets. I tend to ramble about the Arkham games and their appearance, so I'm just gonna say looks as good as Arkham City. In Arkham City, where the open city was rather cool to fly around in, if you needed a fast travel system in a Batman game, that clearly means there's a lack of focus somewhere. Clearly, there's too much city, not enough content, and that's pretty much the case. There does seem to be a lack of anything going on in this game outside the main story, save from constantly scrambling around the city for Enigma caches, which serve as the game's Riddler trophies. However, I will admit the game implements the detective mode to its full potential. The reconstruction of crime scenes and analysing the events of what happened in the crime and where certain clues went is a fantastic use of the system. It doesn't make up for the lack of content, however, but it's really cool and it does feel more like a detective mode than a colourful zoom than it was in the previous games. However, before I talk about the main story of Arkham Origins, I need to talk about the lies we were fed up until its release. In the build-up for Arkham Origins, we were promised eight top assassins from the DC Universe hired to kill Batman. In order of appearance, Killer Croc, The Electrocutioner, Deathstroke, Copperhead, Bane, Deadshot, Shiva, and Firefly. What we got was four assassins, Deathstroke, Cophead, Bane, and Firefly. Why don't I count the others? Well, Killer Croc was wasted at the start of the game, and so wasn't anywhere near as hard as he should have been, plus we didn't even know he was an assassin until after we beat him. The Electrocutioner went down in a single punch and was later killed off in the game, and Deadshot and Shiva weren't in the main story. No, really, Deadshot and Shiva were shoved into two side missions, respectively. And Deadshot was in the main trailer for Arkham Origins with Deathstroke. How he hasn't got a dedicated part in the main story, I have no fucking clue. If we get promised eight DC villains to serve as assassins in a Batman game, we expect eight DC villains to serve as assassins in a Batman game. <sighs> That's all I really have to say about the gameplay mechanics and basic premise of Arkham Origins. The story is that Roman Sionis, aka Black Mask, has broken into Blackgate Prison on Christmas Eve with Police Commissioner Loeb. Batman follows Sionis inside but is unable to stop Loeb's death. On the roof, he faces off against Killer Croc after being unable to apprehend Black Mask. Kicking the crap out of the Croc, Batman decides it's question time. Your boss, where's he going? The boss of me is me. I want teeth, I want answers. Wait till Black Mask's assassins get through with you. What assassin? <laughs> Whoever wins is gonna be famous. At least we know he won't be ugly. 
Returning to the Batcave, Batman decrypts a drone hard drive he recovered from the Blackgate attack, right. uncovering some very interesting information. His name is Killer Croc. He's already behind bars. Oh, I pity his cellmate. I don't. Let's see what else is on the drone's hard drive. Each of them gets one of these envelopes. I need them delivered tonight. They're all hired killers, the best in the business. Black Mask isn't messing around. Slade Wilson. Deathstroke, former military, subject of a failed medical experiment. Failed, you say? Garth of Lens, aka Firefly, burns on 90% of his body. His obsession is going to be his end. How unlike anyone I know. Here's a face I don't recognize. Copperhead. Strange. These reports reference a male, not a female. Fourteen escapes, huh? Well, you won't forget not. What the? Floyd Lawton, a.k.a. Deadshot, Freeze. says here he's an expert sharpshooter. How on earth? Suspected of many assassinations. Dangerous, but reckless. Street tough named Lester Baczynski. Calls himself Electrocutioner. Shocking. Shiva. Her skill is unmatched. Killer. Eight assassins after your head. Yeah, just repeating the fact that eight assassins are in this game doesn't make us forget that we won't face all of them in the main story. Heading out into the night to try and find Black Mask, Batman decides his best way of finding Roman Sionis is to talk to the Penguin, the man who supplied him with all the technology in the attack. Tracking him down to a ship, the final offer, he comes across the second of Black Mask Assassins, the Electrocutioner. to show me where the penguin is fail after that pitiful excuse for an assassin was taken down batman finally reaches now the penguin's office before Falcon. beating the crap out of the mini this is the prick. Time. now hold on hold on a bloody minute i seen your act i ain't done nothing you not done <laughs> Black Mask, put a bounty on my head. Where is he? I don't keep tabs on him in Giza with a grudge. You're not a popular bloke in this town. You're running out of time. Wait, wait. Lacey Towers, there was a murder. It was supposed to be his same house. But, or Black Mask, he's got problems of his own, I'd say. Someone broke in there. I'm not playing games, Slade. The boss fight with Deathstroke is woefully repetitive, however, especially if you are, like me, a badass with the Arkham combat system. 
as cool as it is to see such a versatile DC villain in the game, I feel like Deathstroke was wasted here. After defeating Deathstroke, Batman heads over to the crime scene in Lacey Towers that Penguin spoke of. As they're looking around, he finds some interesting evidence. Someone killed Black Mask, but this crime took place several days ago, and I saw Black Mask earlier tonight. The only answers I have raise more questions. Who is the Joker? Was he the killer here? Or is he one of the assassins? I have a body, an unknown shooter, and an unknown assailant who attacked the shooter. I need to match the DNA samples against the records in the National Criminal Database to identify who was in the room. If the Joker ends up being the villain of this game, I'm going to be pissed. So Batman, trying to uncover the identity of this mysterious Joker, heads out to the police HQ to try and hack into the police criminal database, only to uncover some mysterious goons planting explosives at the foundations. After having a brief encounter with Barbara Gordon, Batman heads out to the bank and finds Black Mask and his crew. Or does he? By now, Gotham PD thinks Roman Sionis is dead. The casualty of a turf war. Murdered by the Penguin. But I know better. Someone spooked Sionis' girlfriend. So he sent her to his safe house. Which was anything but safe. Sionis showed up later, ready for trouble, and found it. Or so it seemed. Roman's always been paranoid. That's probably why he's lasted this long. He'd sent in a decoy, giving himself the element of surprise. But it wasn't enough. There was a fight. Sionis lost. The killer didn't hesitate to shoot the decoy, but he wanted Roman alive to access the cash stored at the Gotham Merchants Bank. With Sionis under control, all that remained was to tie up loose ends. But it wasn't the fire that killed Sionis' girlfriend. What kind of monster forces a man to kill the ones he loves? The Joker. He's the shadow I've been chasing. And now I know where he's going next. Gotham Merchants Bank. Think you can just waltz under my bank, huh? Roman, I'm here for the Joker. The Joker? Never heard of him. How about you, dog? Know the Joker? The who? <laughs> and you, sir? Name Joker? Ring a bell? <laughs> you son of a bitch! You think you can steal from me? I got away with it! You're a dead man! Dead! You shall pay a long Operation. Well, technically, it's my operation now. Isn't that right, boys? You got me. Now let her go. Oh, life would be so simple if you were all I wanted. No, no, you're just a teeny little distraction compared to what I've got on my sleeve. <laughs> Here, have a laugh 
upon me! <laughs> you hear that? Sounds like eight tiny reindeer! Really? I'm sorry, I thought we were promised Black Mask as a villain to this game. I'm sorry, when did the Joker suddenly become involved in this? Why is the Joker involved in this? This game is just straight up lied to me. It's lied to me about Black Mask being the villain, lied to me about eight fucking assassins. Is this even an Arkham game? So far I've seen very little as to anything that makes this in any way a prequel to Arkham Asylum. I mean, yes, later on we find out Bane is creating a new type of Venom called TN1, obviously an early Titan formula, and during the end credits we hear Quincy Sharp petitioning to reopen Arkham Asylum, but besides from that, nothing seems to link up. This is a lie. It is all lies. There aren't eight assassins villains, Black Mask isn't the main antagonist, it's not an origin story for Batman, and it sure as all hell isn't an origin story for the Arkham series. However, Troy Baker does a fantastic performance as the Joker. This, without a doubt, is the best possible follow-up to Mark Hamill I could have ever hoped for. This is the voice of the Joker in his youth. I honestly believe that this guy I'm listening to right now is the voice of a young, raw, and unrefined Joker. I salute you, you magnificent voice whore bastard. Troy Baker's magnificent performance, however, doesn't change the fact that this game is all fucking lies. So anyway, after the Joker gets away, Batman chases after Black Mask to deduce where the Joker has escaped to. After tracking him down, Batman is ambushed by the assassin Copperhead. Second break. Do you think that'll make me talk? After what he's put me through, the torture, turn my men on me! Stole from me! Murdered my woman! He's my kill, not yours! I can control your pacemaker remotely. You wanna see what 250 beats per minute feels like? You wouldn't. Copperhead. Tell him and I'll pay you whatever you want. Make him suffer and I'll pay you. An empty promise from a fallen king. I know about the Joker. Couple of freaks. You two deserve each other. What did you do to me? They say imitation is the best form of flattery. So, these guys must have been kissing Rock City's ass from here to the fucking moon with how much they have ripped off the previous games. Are you so chicken shit scared of being at least the teeniest bit original that you'll just rip straight off previous boss fights? This is literally the Raz boss fight from Arkham City. I mean, think about it. Batman is stripping out on something that could kill him, hallucinating off his tits and fighting multiple enemies that are just the same character. But most of them are just in his mind. Uh, so, after Batman finally manages to calm down and throw Cophead into a truck, he tracks down the Electrocutioner to the location of where the Joker meets with his remaining assassins. How oh, I don't give a shit anymore. A Joker kicks the Electrocutioner out of a window, and Batman loots his electric gloves from him. To put the Electrocutioner's death in perspective for you guys, he was literally only in this game so Batman could loot his corpse. Reaching the Joker's penthouse, Batman meets with the Joker, for we have ourselves a real Bane boss battle for the first time in the Arkham series. This game is awful. By the way, 
I feel so insulted this game considers itself an Arkham game. But it does a fantastic choice personifying the Joker in his early days. And goddamn, it gave Bane a fantastic character model. The Bane boss battle is the most difficult in this game. It's not a difficulty spike on the same level as the Supreme Hunter in Prototype, but it's definitely noticeable. It's definitely a far cry from hit him in the face with a batarang when he charges and beat the crap out of him when he's dazed. Bane in this fight, I feel, is unpredictable. Like he's constantly changing strategy, adapting to Batman's fighting style, like a mercenary such as Bane would. Anyway, after Batman manages to hold his own against Bane, Bane flees, Batman starts a track on him, and the Joker goes to prison where he meets prison psychologist Dr. Harleen Quinzel. It's here that the control briefly swaps to the Joker's perspective, which shows the origins of the Joker. It seems to imply the series has been following the Red Hood approach to the Joker's backstory. The Joker control sequence is actually rather interesting, even if it plays like a Final Fantasy XIII corridor. As we dive into the Joker's brain, however, Batman heads to where Bane's tracker is broadcasting from, leading him to uncovering the mercenary's hideout. who I am. You're not safe. Wait, so Bane knows who Batman is, but in the later games he doesn't. In Arkham Origins he knows who he is, TN1 causes amnesia. Is this setting up for some ridiculous over the top and potentially insultingly bad plot twist? Batman is quickly sidetracked from returning home by the arrival of Firefly. After allying himself with Commissioner Gordon to save Gotham and defeat the pyromaniac, Batman returns to the Batcave only to discover Bane has beaten him there and has left Alfred for dead. Batman, remembering his new acquisition from the Electrocutioner, restarts Alfred's heart and races back to Blackgate to stop the Joker from running amok. <laughs> Let him go! I... I understand you. You had a chance to let me die, and you didn't take it. <laughs> I bet right now you're wishing you had. I've killed... a lot of people. <laughs> I brought the city to its knees, crippled the police force, and it's not even time to unwrap our presents! <laughs> Chip it! Let's do this. Okay, okay. So, what our friend Vane holds in his hand is a heart monitor. Once he clamps it on, every beat of his bacon little heart will charge the battery on this electric chair. And when it's fully charged... <laughs> so either you kill Bane... <laughs> no, I won't kill him. But you will. You will fight me with all your resolve, or you will die. Someone is going to die. You, me, or the clown. The question of which one of us it is, is in your hands. Uh, can someone please explain to me what the hell this plan is about? I mean, Bane has no real loyalty to the Joker. He clearly doesn't care about the money, and neither does the Joker for that matter. Neither of them have any real motivation or reason for doing any of this. Okay, I guess the Joker doesn't really need any motivation for whatever the fuck he does, because he's the Joker, he gets away with anything, but... Bane? I'm pretty sure he'd need some sort of incentive for doing this. Batman uses the Electrocutioner's gloves to shock Bane's heart into stopping, and, as soon as the Joker leaves, uses them again to restart Bane's heart. Bane is for some reason, pissed at Batman's refusal to kill him. 
In his anger, therefore, he uses the TN1 formula on himself, which results in... What? Please tell me you did not just do that to Bane. Holy fuck nuts, really? He, he had a fantastic character model in this game, instead of a hulking brute from the previous two. Why the fuck would you decide to do this? Has this game just made it its mission in existence to piss me off? You know what? Fuck it. Fuck this entire game, fuck it all. Batman knocks Bane the fuck out, strings the now brain damaged villain up by his teeth, and beats the crap out of the Joker and flies away. Thus concluding Batman Arkham ripoff. The story feels so sluggish playing through it. The game lies straight to your face, which feels like it just slapped you. And while the voice acting is pretty good in the case of Batman and the Joker, the lack of side missions and content in this game makes it feel boring as sin. And the way they just basically slap Bane at the end just pisses me the fuck off. Batman Arkham Origins is a decent game in terms of controls and gameplay aspects, but for the sheer lack of content, for the sheer insultingly horrific story, and just a general copy and paste job from Arkham City, it receives a dark rating of 32. Now that's not funny. So my Christmas view got a little bit uh, angry there guys, but I hope you enjoyed watching my Christmas view of Batman and Arkham Origins. I've been Darkest Samuel 101, you have been watching Darkest 101 Reviews. Thanks for watching, Merry Christmas YouTube.